Jay Wright's motion offense at Villanova is my number one team to study whenever I'm looking at film. Particularly because I coach high school basketball, I think this is the most directly translatable offense in college basketball using modern concepts to convert from both four out and five out actions. My name is Coach Gibson Piper. You can follow me on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. In this breakdown, we're going to look at my favorite Villanova concepts, some of their spacing techniques, the evolution of Jay Wright's offense, and why it's so effective and impactful in 2020. The evolution of Jay Wright's offense at Villanova is extremely interesting. Now, I didn't have enough film or time to go back and watch every year and every possession, but I've watched and studied his offense from 2014 on, and that was kind of the turning point of when his offensive philosophy sort of changed. The spacing and the concepts essentially remain the same, but the biggest difference was the three-point attempt percentage. It jumped from 2013, which was at 35% of their shots were from three-point land, to 45% of their shots. And then it stayed above the 40s and even got up into 54% in 2019. So essentially they're taking 54% of all of their shots from three-point land. Since 2014, this number has been around the 43 to 48% range as far as their three-point attempt percentage. And of course, culminated with a 48% attempt rate, 127 offensive rating, and the national championship in the 2017-18 season, one of the more dominant teams that I can remember in college basketball. It doesn't mean, however, that shooting more threes equates to having the best offense or one of the better offenses in the nation. Of course, that's not how it works. However, Jay Wright had some pretty good offenses before this. You know, a couple of, of top 10, top 11, top 25 rankings and Ken Palm rankings, but never really a consistent high level top five offense until 2015. 2015 to 2019 essentially was four straight years of being in the top four of Ken Palm's adjusted offensive efficiency. And that coincided with taking more threes. So adding the three-point shot to, to Villanova's already great spaced, great concept, great fundamental offense was key to allowing his offense to get to the next level. In addition to shooting more threes, Running more ball screens and being more ball screen centric was huge for the evolution of Jay Wright's offense. In 2008-2009, they only ran ball screens 13% of the time. It hovered in the teens for the next few years, got up to the 20% range in 2012-2013, 2013-2014, and jumped up to 30% in 2015-16 when his offense became top four, top three, top three, and then top one. Using more ball screens, going from the early teens to mid-20s all the way up to using them 30% of the time consistently over the past five seasons has allowed Villanova's offense to explode and like we talked about, really, really expand and take advantage of what we consider modern basketball. Now, the more interesting part of this is running more ball screens doesn't mean you're going to have more efficient offense. In the 2017-18 season, like I mentioned, they only ran ball screens 22% of the time. Part of that is due to switching and they had you know better on-ball skill players who could break down players one-on-one -on -one like Jalen Brunson and DiVincenzo. However, Running more ball screens has been a huge factor in the evolution of Jay Wright's offense. Jay Wright's teams have always had excellent offensive spacing. Offensive spacing can be driven through two or three different things. You can teach it and rep it every day no matter what you're shooting and no matter what your skills look like. You can create it naturally by having great shooters and then you can combine teaching incredibly great spacing with great shooting. Jay Wright has mastered the ability to teach great spacing with great shooting. The number one thing for Villanova's offense has been four out, one in. If you go through any of the old YouTube videos or championship production breakdowns of what Jay Wright explains, it's always four out, one in motion offense, the four out, one in motion offense rules. I even created a video three or four years ago about Jay Wright's four out, one in motion offense. Calling it a four out one in motion offense in 2020 seems like a disservice to the quality of the blending between four out and now five out that Villanova has done over the past few years. Obviously the NBA has gone to more five out concepts, spacing bigs in the perimeter, playing more skill and more smaller lineups overall. The difference with Jay Wright's four out one in motion offense compared to now is it may start 
as a four out one in. So you'd see the player in the dunker spot or the porch, uh, whatever your terminology is that. Essentially the short corner uh, or baseline area for the big to be opposite of the ball. That's like the number one rule in every, any, any four out one in motion offense, it's gonna be the big is opposite of the ball. Villanova over the past few years will have the porch eventually exit out to the corner or, or lift even. You'll see the five man in Villanova's offense lift from the porch or the baseline to the perimeter. And that creates a five out look. Now, obviously this helps when you have five shooters and it helps that Jay Wright at Villanova can recruit five players and put five players on the time that have the size and the shooting to be able to run five out or four out. But the biggest difference is, is they, have, they, they create this look and then go into ball screens. They still maintain the same exact concepts in the four out one in. So we still have the slots, which are at the essentially the top of the perimeter free throw lane line extended. We have the corners, and then we have the porch or the dunker spot. Then when the porch or dunker spot lifts to the middle of the floor or lifts to the corners, this creates the five out look where now we would have what I would call the sweet spot filled, the two slots filled, and then the two corners filled. Now it never is a perfect world stand here and we're in five out and we're gonna run five out. It's constant movement, constant motion, and constantly using their concepts to blend the four and the five out offense, really putting pressure on the defense at all times. I wanna look at the spacing cuts that Villanova employs in its offense. When the ball gets reversed, you usually will see a weak side exchange from the slot and the player on the wing or in the corner. And then when the pass gets made from the slot to the corner, you'll see a through cut. So essentially just cutting from the slot, typically to the opposite corner then the opposite slot will fill and they keep the ball moving from there. So pass gets made to the slot, we get a weak side exchange, so slot to slot pass. Here we're gonna see Brunson and Mikhail Bridges exchange on the weak side, and then once the ball gets reversed to DiVincenzo on the wing, we'll get a through cut. So this weak side exchange is gonna occupy the weak side defense, then this through cut is gonna take any help away. The big is gonna stay opposite of the ball low, so he's gonna to continue to the opposite porch, and then that leaves enough room on this wing here to get a rip drive baseline. The help is occupied. You can see their eyes are not even on the ball. We get a one-on-one -on -one drive, and then a pull-up from DiVincenzo here, driving baseline, really just reading if the biggest man's gonna help or if he's able to score. Ends up knocking down the shot here. Another example here is this little handoff and then the ball gets reversed. When the ball gets reversed slot to slot, we're gonna get an exchange. So an exchange from the weak side and then when the pass gets made from the slot to the wing here, we're gonna get that through cut. That through cut occupies the defense, gets the defense moving side to side, the ball's being reversed. That's an extremely important part of their offense. Brunson fills in the slot, and now he's in a one-on-one -on -one driving opportunity. We get a random exchange on the weak side, and then Bridges is gonna drive and hits a tough layup. This is one of my favorite examples of the through action. Brunson passes to the wing and then immediately cuts through. This is normally setting up their slot pick and roll play that I've been talking about for years now. We get a weak side exchange from DiVincenzo going to the opposite corner. He's gonna be the slot ball screen man. So as this pass gets made, we get the weak side exchange. We get a bounce pass on the fill and a bounce pass on the fill. This is setting up their normal slot ball screen action. So we're gonna get a sprint out from the big for the ball screen. Bridges and Pascal are gonna exchange. Now here, what this does is this allows DiVincenzo a ton of room to basically sell with his eyes and then reject the ball screen into space. Now we can see here, all of the Michigan defenders are pressed up on their players. And because of the basic movement, that exchange, we see they're all sucked out on, you know, obviously good shooters, but that weak side exchange took any help away. No help from the strong side corner means DiVincenzo can get downhill unimpeded. And this sort of creates that five, five out look that we mentioned before. I mentioned a lot about the exchanges and that's a big part of Villanova's offense. Having these weak side exchanges when the ball gets reversed 
is key for a couple of things. Not only does it guarantee that you're going to get your offense moving and your players moving, but you're going to get the defense moving as well. So as we see this handoff into a ball screen and the ball gets reversed, we're going to see a pass from the slot to the corner like we talked about with that through cut. And then we're going to get a weak side exchange. And what this does is it creates a little bit of chaos. And this pass from the slot to the corner here, it's just going to be a little bit more chaotic up top and it leaves the baseline space open. And what will happen is as Pascal goes you know, through the corner cut here, we're going to see DiVincenzo drive baseline. Now on this baseline drive, it has to be a decision. Who is the help man here? And it ends up being Pascal in the corner. He continues out to the corner. So when DiVincenzo drives this, it's an easy driving kick, reading who's coming from where and who's helping. As Brunson and Bridges exchange up top, Pascal fills to the corner. Spellman can then, you know, space to the three point line, lift the defense, driving kick for an easy catch and shoot three. Another example here is, uh, is there a going kind of in their catch to shoot philosophy as the ball gets reversed. This is just simple offense. Brunson and DiVincenzo are going to exchange. All it takes is the two Butler defenders to miscommunicate so subtly here. So as this exchange happens, we're going to see him fill up top here. And all it takes is just these two guys just to, are you going to switch? Or are we not going to switch? Are you talking about it? Or are you not talking about it? And all that hesitation allows DiVincenzo and their catch to shoot philosophy, which we'll discuss in a bit, to allow him to catch and shoot this easy NBA three-point land. Great jump shot here. Uh, a little bit of rewind so we can zoom in on that. So zooming in on this, all you can see here is just them hesitate for just this second, switch or no switch, and that leaves an easy catch and shoot opportunity. Having three point shooting threats like Pascal, like Spellman, who both shoot, you know, 35 to 45% from three in the different years they played for Villanova, allows them to invert the offense and have their big space to floor. So as we can see, as Brunson backs down their point guard, the opposite porch Spellman is going to lift to the corner. We get a weak side exchange cut from DiVincenzo, ends up creating this five out look on this kick. So when Brunson passes out of the post here, we're going to see Gillespie attack the closeout with nobody in the lane for rim protection. So it creates a four out look to start and then a five out look on this drive, allowing the five man space to the floor like this. Gets a downhill drive, easy finish for Gillespie. Another example of this is against Texas Tech, who likes to kind of pressure. Uh, we see this early drive and, and push the wing back door. If you're back, if you're denied in their offense, you just go back door. Don't fight it. Brunson's going to back his man down. Spellman's going to lift to the corner. Now, most bigs in defense are going to be, you know, more tempted or not to stay at home, especially in college with no defense of three seconds. So as Brunson attacks here, we get the rest of the Villanova players filling into their spots, filling behind in like the slot location. We see Spellman's defender is going to cheat and sag in the lane here. All that needs to happen is for him to stay there for an extra second. Brunson finds Spellman for an easy catch and shoot three. Another way that the Villanova offense takes advantage of the big spacing is in the pick and roll. Instead of rolling to the rim, spacing to the corner. So we can see as this ball screen happens with another weak side exchange. Uh, after this ball screen set, this would normally be a roll to the rim and then a lift creating sort of shake action, something that Villanova does a great job as well. But instead, we're going to get the big sprinting to the corner, spacing to the three point line, creating that five out look. So it allows Brunson to attack downhill one on one and take advantage of the easier spacing. Against pressure, they'll set flat ball screens. So as we can see, Pascal is going to set this flat ball screen for Brunson, who allows him to get downhill. Once he gets downhill, it's an easy read. Two on the ball. Brunson does a nice little stride stop, you know, pivot pass. He's going to find Pascal on, on the uh, perimeter, creating a five out look. So after Brunson hits him, Brunson's going to lift to the three point line. Pascal is going to attack the closeout now, creating this five out look. All it is is an easy blow by and a two foot jump stop dunk. Same exact example here against Creighton. We get sort of like, you know, not really a flat, more like an angled ball screen here. Pick and pop to the perimeter. Brunson's going to come off and attack this. DiVincenzo's going to recognize it in space to that corner. So as Brunson comes off this, he's going to recognize it, hold the defense, hit the pick and pop, and now we have a five out look. So right now, the rim protector is a guard. So as Pascal attacks, he knows there's no help. Quicker than any other center, blow by, dunk. Jay Wright allows his players a lot of freedom. And a big part of that is this catch-to-shoot philosophy. Essentially, if you're open, 
the fair, the very first time you catch the ball, you're going to shoot it. Uh, and I love that, you know, they mic up some of these Big East coaches in the uh, broadcast for Fox. Uh, and so we'll get a little bit of insight and, and to Jay Wright talking about that freedom here shortly. Your philosophy always has been, hasn't it, to allow your guys a little bit of freedom on the offensive end if they expend the energy you need on the defensive end, Jay. Is that fair? Is that, yeah, exactly. And thanks for saying that nicely, Tim. Because Raph <laughs> says I let them do whatever they want to do. <laughs> That's right, you're a great recruiter. <laughs> a little bit of freedom was nice, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is... Lots of broadcasters and coaches have said that he lets them do whatever they want, but essentially that's what it is, is, is a catch to shoot. You'll never be as open as when you first catch it. So some of the shots look a little bit crazy, but it catches the defense off guard at times and shooting difficult shots allow you to score in the toughest moments and the toughest scenarios of the season. My favorite offensive concept that Villanova has is their keeps or the fake ball screen something that i've run with my teams in high school with great success uh, we actually have a secret signal for it we don't really have a play call for it so teams don't know what's coming but keeping the ball is absolutely great what villanova does is they set this up with sort of a side handoff action i love how brunson's pointing here kind of getting the defense up and faking them out with this handoff so as Brunson goes here, he's going to kind of hold, hesitate, show the ball, and then change speeds real quick. Notice that the two other players, the bigs in this scenario, are going to lift up at the same time, emptying out the paint, not allowing any help from anybody on the weak side. Same action here, hesitate, blow by, we get a little bit of lift from the big, creates that five out look. And I love here how we fake the handoff to the five man, blow by, easy layup. This flows right into Villanova's dribble post-ups. Uh, they do this off of fake handoffs or any drives now. Absolutely love this action. So as Brunson drives in the post here, uh, we're going to see the big, in this case, Spellman's going to lift to the to the three-point line, talk about that five-out spacing. Now we got Brunson one-on-one -on -one in the post, and now we've inverted the offense again. So as he keeps it, he's going to basically fake any handoff. And at any point in the offense, the ball gets reversed. He can go right into this side dribble handoff here. He can fake it and go right into the post. And the easy read for this is the bigs and anybody who's you know in different scenarios can either screen away or they can either space away. Obviously, if you have really good shooting bigs, you want them to space away. So as Brunson backs down, we're gonna get a backdoor cut from the top as the spacing cut happens from uh, the bigs and, and different scenarios like that, not allowing anybody to really double off of anybody because this is, you know, everybody is a 36% three point shooter or better out on the floor. I don't want to go into too much detail about their jump stops and pump fakes and all the philosophy and the pivots and things like that. I've done extensive videos. There's a lot of video content out there that, uh, that are great about this. Uh, but essentially, the core of Villanova's basic skills are going to be jump stop, pump fake, and pivots. And they combine all of these into basically every offensive possession. When you drive, you try to land on two feet. Obviously, in certain scenarios, you can go off one foot. But for the most part, land off two feet jump stop beyond balance then you have your pivot foot either your left foot or your right foot in certain scenarios uh, jay wright teaches the one two or the left right pivots uh, i do as well find it's a little bit easier to master for kids at our age uh, and then on any sort of catch it's catch pump fake attack catch pump fake jump stop basically mastering the basics this is things that i've taught at the high school level it's easier for them to pick up and it's great just to hammer them home and to dominate the simple now these all culminate into the second cut concept. Second cut concept has been discussed by a lot of people. It's something that I teach in high school. It's something that Jay Wright finds success against every team, especially the best teams. So second cut concept essentially is when anything happens, so let's say a drive happens, a jump stop, when the, there's nothing open. When you aren't open right away, you have to find a second cut, either that's a back door or a spacing cut. In this example, we're going to see DiVincenzo get into the lane in early offense and be on balance. Now, from first look here, nobody's really open. Uh, Kansas does a good job of kind of zoning up. We've got Devontae Graham going to close out to the trail man. What I love here is how the trail man, I believe it's Booth, is going to set his man up, kind of fake, hesitate, and then cut back door in the second cut concept. Five out spacing allows a layup. Another example here, after an early push, we're gonna get DiVincenzo driving in the lane. We get an early collapse. Four players from Creighton are gonna be here on the ball. So basically we have a, 
extreme uh, example of transition defense where we're loading to the ball. What this allows is for the other four Villanova players to kind of read what's open. From the top of the key, we're gonna get a little hesitation and then a cut right behind the defense for an easy layup. Second cuts work best against the best teams. It's something that I've drilled and something that I love to incorporate into our offense because it gets us easier buckets when it gets tough. Thank you so much for watching this breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I look forward to doing more.